keeps us pitted against one another. And, and that system that fuels us to stay pitted against one another and, and looking at each other like we each other's enemy. It's like we just hate and we look at that other person that looks so much like us and we hate ourselves so much that we spew out that hate and we do so much, so much damage. We create so much hurt within the lives of others. That system needs to be broken, man. Like it really does. And I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know how to do it. I don't have the answers, but I do know it's something that is serious and it's something that we as the black community, that we need to come together in solidarity. Like we were able to get so many other people to join our movement and come and become one with us. We need to come together as a black. Now I'm going to show y'all a video of young Dolph's beautiful queen. Dolph Beautiful Queen speaks on his existence and speaks on the things before he died. The video you are watching, it's moments before Young Dolph died and his wife does a beautiful statement, you feel me, about everybody. It ain't just for Dolph, it's for all of us and, and, and how she feels about her husband before he died. Remember, key word, before he died. So let's listen to the Beautiful Queen as she give her synopsis on what's been going on out here in these streets. The place um you know just a lot of different emotions from everything that i've experienced and like i've been trying to make sense of so much right i've been trying to make sense of like just where we are in the times like in terms of like everything just seeming so hateful like from police brutality to like non-black on white crimes but then like i had to face a tragedy within my own like household or you're not household but my family um dynamic and we experienced black on black crime and for me that was like something else it's like we getting all of this hate from all over from all of these different areas and then we give that same hate to our own people within our own community right and it's just so messed up because it's like, I'm seeing these protests going on as I'm mourning and grieving my brother's loss, you know? And I'm just like, man, like we we shouting loud. We're, we're fighting hard for our voices to be heard, for non-black people to respect us and to realize and acknowledge that black lives matter because I do believe I'm black. I do believe black lives matter. But I'm like, what about to our fellow black peers and, and just our community? like? why don't we treat our lives like we matter amongst one another? You know, like, I know more people, more people that have died at the hands of a black person committing a crime against them than I do personally know someone who's, um, who's been murdered or, you know what I'm saying, um, attacked by a non-black person. And although I know I'm not trying to diminish the, the, the value of you know, us experiencing police hate crimes and, you know, police brutality that's that's driven by racism or whatnot. I'm not diminishing that, but it's just still very hurtful to me that even once we we get a conviction or we get bills to be put in place to where non black people have to value our lives. What about what remains within our own communities where we don't value each other? And so it just, it breaks my heart because literally my heart is broken because I lost such an important person to me due to a senseless crime, you know, and it was his black brother. Like they, they even discussed, my brother even tried to be like, look, we're going to be responsible men. We're going to handle this decently. Let's come up with an agreement. He tried to do that and that wasn't good enough. It's just, it's just death over honor you know like literally that's the code that people live by and especially within our community and we hurt each other time and time again and I'm just like what are we gonna do about that like I've never experienced this type of pain before but I know it's so many people that have they've experienced this and I'm just like what can be done literally I was just watching you know um a news clipping where someone pulled in front of a house and let off like 70 rounds right and I get that it's all type of backstories and reasonings behind, but really like, man, it should not be no reason like for you to bring so much havoc, wreak, wreak 
so much havoc on someone else, you know what I'm saying? Take lives, like, without even thinking about everybody else that's associated and attached to these lives and what it will do for them, man. Like, it's just, it's so much of that, and it's like a vicious cycle. You know, you hurt my family, I'm hurt yours. I hurt your family, you're gonna hurt mine. And it just keeps going, and it's like, what are we gonna do to combat that? What are we gonna do to end that? What are we, how can we protest against that? How can we shame the people within our community to like the most utmost way of shaming someone. I don't know like what to do, you know, but putting our heads together, like when are we gonna come and put our heads together to figure out what can be done? And that's where my head has been. And I've just been silent because it's like, I don't wanna come off like, oh, my, my hurt is bigger than, you know, everybody else's hurt or anything like that. But it's just like, my hurt is real. I gotta acknowledge it. And this is like, I really wonder like, what are we gonna do like I, i'm literally i'm literally stuck um in this place where where i'm realizing like we don't value our own lives like i was robbed like about 2007 i was robbed at gunpoint in detroit um and two black men like they they robbed me at gunpoint right it was during the holidays. And it was like, they didn't look at me like I was their sister, like I could be, you know what I'm saying, they little cousin, like nothing. Um, yeah, like they, they literally could have taken my life. And then it's just like, this happened to my brother and I literally had to stop and get gas in an area that wasn't like, it was just a lot of activity, a lot of loud, like just a lot of, just a lot of commotion going on, right? And I literally felt so unsafe. Like it was like the engines was revving real hard and people hanging out the window saying stuff. And I got so nervous, so much anxiety. I was scared. Like I'm a black woman and I'm in a black environment and I'm scared. I'm literally like my heart was beating. Yeah, it could be from my trauma, but I'm like, at the end of the day, I realized that my life could end in an instant over someone who may just want to take it and not see me as one of them, not see me as, anything of value my life could not matter in like a, a blink of an eye you know um and that's scary to me like I literally and I hate that because I love my people like I'm the type of person that like I want to be amongst my people I want my kids to live amongst my people like and and to feel proud of where they come from and be proud to be black but you say that and in the same instant, you can sound like a hypocrite because you you scared for your life around your own people, but it's like, it's a why. Because my own people will literally draw blood, like take my life and not think shit about me. And that's the problem. That is a problem. I'm like, what do we do about it? Like, I understand that why. I understand that it's a system that created us to be so against one another, but we gotta break that system too. Like we have to, it's a system that's been created for everything that we endure as black people, but we got to break those systems just as we want them to break their systems and the way that they deal with us and the way that they can abuse us and handle us like police. I feel like that's the system that we are trying to go against. I feel like it should be another system that we should be tackling and it should be the system that keeps us pitted against one another. And, and that system that fuels us to stay pitted against one another and, and looking at each other like we each other's enemy. It's like we just hate and we look at that other person that looks so much like us and we hate ourselves so much that we spew out that hate and we do so much, so much damage. We create so much hurt within the lives of others. That system needs to be broken, man. Like it really does. And I don't know what it's gonna take. I don't know how to do it. I don't have the answers, but I do know it's something that is serious and it's something that we as the black community, that we need to come together in solidarity. Like we were able to get so many other people to join our movement and come and become one with us. We need to come together as a black community in solidarity. And we need to stress to one another and, and get our, our our people on board to like our black lives matter to one another like our black lives matter you my sister you my brother you could be my grandma you could be my mom like you could be so many people in my life that matter like our lives matter and that's what that's just what i want our people to kind of consider and take into just just think about just just simmer on it don't have to be no dispute we don't got to go back and forth it's not meant to be controversial as, as controversial as the topic is 
I'm not bringing it to be controversial, to go, go in a debate of the whys and everything like that. I'm acknowledging that a problem still exists and I'm saying that some way, somehow, we have to come together and figure out a solution because I don't wish this type of hurt on my worst enemy and I don't even have enemies. I can't even say that I have a genuine enemy because I don't have that much hate in my heart to really give somebody that much power over me to say they're my enemy. But if I had one, the hurt that I feel, the hurt that my family feels, I don't wish that on that person because it's 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 unreal, you know, and you, you won't even understand it until you experience it. And I hope that nobody else has to experience it because it's just a hurt that that's not even worth feeling. So um, I just had to get on here and just say that. I, the last thing I wanted to say is that I have been notified that the guy who assaulted my brother, he is in police custody. So I am super excited about that. Um, But this guy was found hiding behind a furnace in somebody's upstairs attic. And my thing is this, like you do such a bold crime and then you turn around and you're hiding. You're doing you're, you're so cowardly that you're hiding, trying to just save your life. Take took somebody else's life, but you're hiding behind a dang on furnace, man. Hiding behind a furnace, like that's ridiculous. That's senseless. That's ridiculous. That's selfish. That's just man like that's that's i just have i'm speechless from that so on one side my family is elated that you know this won't be a cold case but at the same time it's two families being affected one because one is about to be behind bars um one because a life was taken that could never be replaced it's like we got a victory yeah that person was picked up there in police custody but on the flip side of that that won't even bring back our our brother our my a husband a son a father like that opportunity is not here anymore and it's hurtful and so i just had to get on here and just speak my piece because i've been wanting to speak but literally i couldn't even form my thoughts for so long because they were so overwhelming so thank you for all of your prayers thank you for all of your support please continue to donate to car king j's memorial fund um just to help the family, just to at least, until everything settles, the dust settles, um, the finances are all sorted out, that they can have a peace of mind that, hey, you know, you are being supported, it's okay, you know, like, you don't have to just worry about just trying to keep the business afloat so hard that you can't, you forgetting to, like, cry you know like you can't you gotta mask everything you know like allow i'm just i want my family to be able to allow a little time to breathe a little cushion to be able to breathe and that's why i'm asking for your support um and just to keep them lifted in prayer because they deserve that they didn't deserve this situation and i just pray i'm praying for the healing of the world i really am that's my prayer to heal this wicked vicious vile world so thanks it's like we getting all of this hate from all over from all of these different areas and then we give that same hate to our own people within our own community right and it's just so messed up because it's like i'm seeing these protests going on as i'm mourning and grieving my brother's loss you know and i'm just like Man, like we we shouting loud. We're we're fighting 